Hi guys. All right, so I don't know if y'all have noticed, but the vibration of the planet is so much better. So much better. After years and years and years, finally, I can feel this huge difference. And it's a cool thing because I was, I don't know, I think it was five or six days ago, I was out pulling weeds and I got bit by a, uh, a water moccasin snake which was shocking in and of itself because I love snakes and I don't, never even thought about getting bit by one. But in the process of dealing with this situation, yesterday I took some concepts of healing that have never, I've never been able to do healing as specifically on myself. I can do a lot of things, but not what you would typically think of as healing. And I was able to use these concepts on my own body and do some healing. I'm still doing that today. And it's working beautifully. So, me personally, uh, am much more connected to this physical body than I've ever been before. And, of course, I realized that a lot of it was the really low, dense vibrations of the third dimension that interfered with uh, who I am. It really, really interfered with me connecting to this planet. It was just too low. Uh, I just couldn't get the hang of it. Now, thanks to the ayahuasca experience, I understood how it was built. I understand why it was built. I understand the game and why entities are attracted to this kind of contrast, this kind of, uh, well, what I would call insanity, but I do understand why they choose this game. But it was just too, too dense. But that was the point. I was supposed to come here and be of a higher vibration so I could help with the uh, defractaline. And I was very aware of what those low, dense, uh, fractal energies could collapse into. And that was the job, after all, which um, I did, we did, everyone did. So thank you, everybody, for their help. Uh, tremendously awesome. But in those vibrations collapsing which is what they're doing uh, i know it seems like things are crazy out there but they're really not they're um well guys kind of put her foot down and said okay you're gonna have to choose you're gonna have to let go of these fear and anger vibrations or you're going to have to leave now how that's being done is fascinating because i didn't think about it being done the way that it's being done and uh well, that's why she's Guy and I'm just in a human form. She knows this game a lot better than I will ever know it. Uh, because I don't intend to ever come back and do this again. Ever. So, it is fascinating, fascinating how it's being done with, the, um, with, with everybody still getting to have what they want. But the vibrations are, in essence, leaving the planet. Or the planet is forcing the situation. They're forcing the human consciousness to choose a side, like I've said for the last three years. You have to choose a side. You're either going to have to release those anger and fear vibrations, or your consciousness, majority of your consciousness, has got to go somewhere else, to a different place to play those games. Not that there's anything wrong with it. There's nothing in the world wrong with the third dimensional vibrations or the fourth dimensional vibrations at all. It's just uh, where Gaia wants to be right now. That's what it's what this situation is all about. Any consciousness that wants to continue to experience and play with those lower vibrations has the right to and can continue on that path. It's just going to be on a different planet, that's all. As the original uh, Gaia planet energies right here and now. Now, we pretty much got through, like I've told you, the get-go really ruled the areas of fear and anger. That's the vibrations that they live on, that they feed on. And there's all kinds of horror stories as to how they do that. And they aren't just the horror stories, although those horror stories are absolutely true. But they also live on the vibrations of anger and fear that are what you call worries or annoyance. Those are vibrations of fear and anger too. So as those vibrations have 
defractaled into the other vibrations that they were split off from, then they can't access that energy anymore. It's kind of like their food is not available anymore. Uh, think of it like that, that, that what they eat is gone. They're starving to death. And nothing deals well with starving to death or having what it needs being taken away. So they're fighting for what's left. And it's n unfortunately not a very pretty sight, but it's not that they can't go somewhere else. They can go somewhere else. And there's quite a struggle going on for the ones that are trying to hang on. But it is over. And now we're going to go into vibrations, like I've told you before, into pigeon land. This transformation from gecko to pigeon, it's going to be very tempting for people to just jump over onto the, to the pigeon vibrations. But the pigeon vibrations are not 5D either. They are very much 4D, and they have to do with judgment. Well, it's easy to leave behind. It will be very easy for the human consciousness to go from fear and anger to accept what is as what is and then jump on the judgment bandwagon and start this game of who's responsible. It's your fault. It's your fault. If we would have done it this way or that way, then this never would have happened. And that is the transition going into the pigeon vibrations. If And that's fine. Like I've said before, there's nothing in the world wrong with any of the other vibrations or dimensions or densities or whatever it is you want to call them. It's just that Gaia is going to the fifth dimension and judgment vibrations will not be there either. Uh, those have to go and th those are going to go next. So in the process of the fear and the, the uh, anger vibrations, defract to lean into the higher vibrations that they were split off from to begin with, then you can choose to go straight towards the fifth dimensional vibrations, which is basically the easiest way of explaining that is to really take the the videos that I've done recently about this is a game and you're a god and so is everyone else and repeat to yourself over and over again, again that these are gods playing. They're just God's playing. And if you do that and watch the whole thing from that perspective, then it becomes all at once extremely fascinating and at times very, very, very funny. Uh, very, very funny. Like you're watching, if you were to look at it truly from the perspective of it's a game and these are God's playing, the stuff that is happening becomes very hilarious because it's just running into walls. It's like, you know, I play video games with my daughter and I'm not very good at it. Um, I am a newbie newbie. I'm so bad at it. And very quickly, well, we play games where both of us can play at the same time and I'm always forgetting which character that I am. And so I'm like driving around with a little controller and there will be a character that's over running into a wall over and over again and I don't know it because I think that I'm the other character that is Stephanie and um, I'll look over and say well what's that character doing running over and over again into that wall and she'll laugh and say mom that's you and I'll go oh, oh, oh and, and start to drive my right character again and that's kind of what it looks like in this process it looks like um, the entities that have lived on fear and anger they're trying to do the same things that they've been doing for a very very long time and have worked and they're not working so they just keep trying it over and over again and it's like watching these characters run into a wall over and over again and you're going um wall it's not working anymore wall try you know turn to the left turn to the right now the pigeons are ready to jump on this so anybody who wants to come out of fear and anger and jump right from anger into judgment which is a pretty easy jump uh, it is a raising of vibrations, but barely, then that is very easy to do and still stay on the planet. But let me assure you, just like the vibrations of fear and anger were uh, defractaled into the higher vibrations, judgment will be too. And if you jump on the pigeon bandwagon while you're on Gaia, you're going to eventually be 
um, running into that wall for a different reason. So if you're going to 5D, now is the easiest and best time for you to really roll into this. It's a game. These are gods. And just watch them from the perspective of, of interest. I don't want you laughing at people out loud, but you certainly can do it on the inside. Uh, no need to make people angry. These entities, these beings that want to play in the fourth dimension, again, have every right to do so. And you don't have any right to judge what they're doing. There is nothing wrong with being in the fourth dimension, third dimension, in the game, outside the game. All of it is good. All of it is good. It's just a different game. That's all. Um... Stephanie came up, you know, I'd put out there in the last one that we need a new name for Starseed because there, I just stole that and it really isn't accurate. Um, Stephanie came up with um, Source Spark. I kind of like that, Source Spark. To get away from the star and the seed all together, just go with a, a Spark from Source. And I kind of like, I kind of like that. What do you guys think? Anyway, so as we step into Pigeon Land, there's going to be a lot of interest in the real star seeds, the one that deserve that name. The people are going to be really attracted now to uh, their most recent incarnation or, or before being here on Gaia of where they reincarnated from. And those are from other uh, galaxies. They're actually, they're people that are from other universes from other um, parallel universes and parallel galaxies and a lot that you can't see as a human. So there will be a lot of people, and maybe you are th part of this, that you're attracted to this information that will be coming through. A lot of those entities are pigeon um, civilizations. So now that the fear and the anger vibrations are kind of tamped down, that's going to make the other vibrations much louder. So if you are uh, attracted to things like uh, Pleiadian or that you listen to things like about the Galactic Federation, um, anybody that's attracted to space travel or other planets there's a lot of people um uh, well everybody that was into the 3d gecko game they will have basically increased their vibration or they've gone to an alternate planet uh, by the end of this very very shortly so you can roll into that way of playing the game and those civilizations their message is going to be much louder now, I was listening to a speaker who's very well known, who I, he's a very smart guy, and he's collected data for a long time, but he's really gotten into the pigeon game over the last couple of years, and that's where he will play. There has been a great deal of movies and interest uh, from Star Wars and behind, uh, before that, but especially over the last two or three decades about space travel. So there will be a lot of people that will be a attracted to this. But I want y'all to know, because this person I'm talking about, he said that about 80% of the so-called aliens out there in the universe, as you know it, are humans. And that is simply not true. So I would encourage you, if you do want to play the 4D game that you at least open yourself up to all of the entities that are out there, um, all of the experiences that you can have if you're drawn to that direction. The fourth dimension out in the multiverses and all of the galaxies on all the different levels, there is a lot of fascinating stuff out there uh, that you can experience. Absolutely. Everything that you've ever seen in a space movie and far, far more. Uh, the fourth dimension is a huge, 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 huge place. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, things out there that you guys would enjoy. That next to third dimensional Earth, 
uh, would be great fun. There's a lot of fun. Now, for anybody that's going to the fifth dimension, anybody who is a, well, let's use Source Spark for now. Anyone that's a, that's a Source Spark, uh, you're probably going to not be happy with, with those vibrations because they still are telling you what to do. And anyone that's a spor Source Spark, that may be a, too much of a tongue twister to use. Uh -uh. Anyone that's a so Source Spark, it probably will feel too uh, bossy still for you, that you need more freedom than that. But for those that have been um, on Gaia for millions of lifetimes, uh, you very, very, there's going to be a lot of people that are on the planet right now that will go that route. So if you source spark people would, please don't judge them. Um, there isn't a right way and a wrong way of doing this. You didn't come here to remember that you're a god, raise your vibration, and go back to source. That That is all not true. That's just not true. You could do that in a in a split second if you wanted to. Uh, you don't, like I've told you before, there's nothing to learn. There is only experience. That's all that there ever has been. We create, we experience, we create, and we experience, and that's it. Uh, we, we're not trying to learn anything. We're gods. Uh, you can't teach a god anything. A god knows everything. But if these guys want to live in the vibration of the fourth dimension, they are going to lean towards that judgment category. For anyone who doesn't want to do that, just remember what I've said. What somebody else thinks of you is none of your business. And if you will keep that in your mind, then it won't affect you. And it certainly will be far less painful than the fear and anger vibrations that have been on the planet for all this time. Because those vibrations are very uh, painful. Uh, judgment is annoying um, at best unless you lean into it. So just allow them to uh, think what they want to think and don't get in their way. Like I've told you with the geckos, the same thing is true with the pigeons. What they create, what they experience, what they want to do is really none of your business. If you are a source spark, you came to help Gaia defractal these energies into higher energies quickly, uh, comparatively speaking, for a planet. You helped her, you wanted to help her do it quickly because she gave the them more time than what she had intended, and she has a path that she's on to, even though there's no such thing as time, lol. So, this is what you're getting ready to go into, and this is about judgment. So, judgment for anybody who's been dealing with the three. The dense 3D vibrations, judgment should be easy for you guys to deal with. But I say again, remember, say these words. I am a god. They are a god. This is a game, and what they think of me is none of my business. Now, your job is what you think of you. And you can go back to 1 and 2. If you're starting to feel badly about yourself, if you're starting to judge yourself, then you go back to, oh yeah, I'm a god, this is a game. Now, no judgment, right? So, you don't worry about what other people think of you. Now is the time if you want to stay out of pigeon land. If you want to get to 5D, I'm not really concerned about um, the source sparks getting caught up like they did in fear and anger. Those are so dense, they will suck you down so easily. Judgment harder for you to get sucked into it from other people's judgment but what you will be at high risk for is judging yourself and if you're judging yourself harshly then you are still in the judgment vibrations and you will still stay in the fourth dimension you will be vibrating fourth dimensionally you will not be raising to the fifth dimension you have to stop judging yourself harshly now, what I try to do, because I'm really bad at this, is I try to catch myself and what I'm thinking about myself at any given time. And what I do is I flip it and I said, I say, if I was listening to somebody say this about someone else, what would I do? And I guarantee you every single time I would shut them down. 
I would absolutely shut them down. That the stuff that I say about myself in my mind is so harsh that there is no way I would allow anyone to verbalize anything like that about anyone. No matter how supposedly bad they were, I would not allow it in my presence. So I that's what I do, and it works for me. Um, if y'all want to comment below and maybe say some things that help for you to help you um, not do that, but really, if you do two things, don't worry about what other people are, are thinking about you uh, because it's none of your business, and then watch the judgment of self. And once you start getting rid of that judgment of self, then you can start leaning into the true loving yourself. It is really hard to love yourself truly unconditionally when you are in the midst of all of those vibrations of anger and hatred floating around on this planet. Now that those have been fractaled in and there's very few of them, you have to really work at it to find them now. Um, feels much, much, much better. So now you can head to that next step of, of being in that place of heading towards self-love. True self-love. And you and I are the ones that know what you're really thinking about yourself and how you're what your past has been, what your future might hold, which is why I went into the whole time thing, so you could understand that there's no such thing as time, and that really you're recreating it, future and past, all the time. So there is no reason to hold any of that against yourself or anyone else. For the most part, I don't see source spark people doing that about others, but we're pretty bad about doing it uh, to ourselves. So remember, you're a god. You can't do it wrong. No one can do it wrong. There is no right answer. There is no wrong answer. There is simply whether you're going to go to Alaska or Hawaii. Um, for those that are have left because they're going to Hawaii and you're going to Alaska, wave at them. Tell them enjoy their trip. And then for those that are going to uh, Pigeon Land, think of them as going to California. It's simply a different place, that's all. It's not more right or less right. Um, for those of you who changed your mind, who came to assist a guy to go to 5D, you can finish your job and decide to stay and play in the fourth dimension. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And like I said before, there is a lot to be fascinated about in the fourth dimension. A lot. And there's already a lot of people that have been out in the uh, the multiverses, they've been out in the other galaxies, they have met other entities, a lot of them. Most of them are good by your standards. Um, a lot of pigeons are really, really good. Uh, the geckos, I think you would have a harder time as civilized mankind of seeing them as good even though they believe they're good. Uh, so understand that. They absolutely believe that the way they run things and the way they live their life is the best way of doing it. Uh, they really believe that. Uh, the pigeons are kind, kinder, gentler, but they still believe that their way is the only way to go. Uh, they're just nicer about how they control you to get there. But you would probably have uh, most humans that have gone through the last 60 years on this planet would find most of the pigeon worlds and galaxies to be fun. Really would. Uh, but like I said, the source sparks, it would get old with you pretty fast because you're used to ultimate freedom. Uh, it hasn't been that long since you were in God form and out of amnesia, and you can feel that uh, in your soul. Everything about it, you can feel the difference. But if you do decide that you want to play that game, there's nothing wrong with that. Eventually, of course, just like the fear and anger vibrations had to defractal into a higher vibration so will judgment judgment also will be eventually defractal into the higher vibration so that can Gaia can land in in 5d and beyond now the work that I came to do was all on uh, what I call land walkers land walking humans the most uh, that was the lowest vibration of any of the humans on the planet a lot of the work now is being done in the oceans um, Humans that have lived in Middle Earth and uh, the um, center of the Earth, they were higher vibrational, closer to pigeons for a long, long, long time. 
um, they have stayed away from Landwalkers because Landwalkers, that was the, the game of the most intense, lowest vibrations on the planet. And so they have stayed away from it. So even the ones that are those higher vibrations, as the, I would say, probably the ocean, middle and center earth, they are like high 4D, have been for a long time. The ones in the ocean are about mid-range, from mid to high, right in the middle, uh, say three quarters of the way up through 4D. They have still lived in uh, mostly a lighter version of anger. They're very quiet people, very more blissful people, but they certainly have been annoyed that um, and angry at the land walkers for what they've done on the land. But they're in the process of changing that as we speak, and there are quite a few source sparks that are working on the oceans right now. Um, that's not my job, although I can watch it, I can see what's going on. There might be those of you who didn't know what you were here for, and all of a sudden, the last couple weeks, um, you felt either more tired, or you've slept longer, or highly invigorated, or something along that line. You probably have been tapped on the shoulder to help with the defractaline uh, of the energies in the oceans and the civilizations that live there. Uh, but those eventually will defract a lawn. Uh, there will be probably a lot more information available for those who want it of interacting with beings that are out in the rest of the universe and the multiverses. Uh, so if you are attached or attracted to that, uh, you could start stating intense or visualizing strongly what you want to experience. And you will be able to do that. All of the godlike powers, what people think of as sixth sense, will be a lot stronger now. Uh, telepathy is a lot easier to do now if you'll listen to me. And then it's not about listening to people's sentences in their head. It's more group, it's a whole block of, of thought or understanding of, of where a person's coming from. So you can expect to have that. Uh, finish not just your loved one's sentences, but anyone's sentences. Uh, because telepathy will be a lot stronger. Um, creating things in general will become a lot faster. It already is a lot faster. So keep an eye on that happier and happier thing. And you'll see the results of it a lot faster now than you ever have. As you raise in vibration, uh, time collapses as well. And it becomes very, very different. And there's been a big difference in that, especially over the last two to four weeks. Okay, so I think that's it. Alrighty, guys. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Talk to you later. Huge hugs. And uh, bye now.